good day to everyone. Welcome to Mathematics Lessons Made Easy with Teacher Phoebe. So for today, I will be discussing all about statistics and the basic terms related to it. Okay, so for today, there won't be enough, there won't be many computations, but there's still pagdating natin sa topic about the measures of central tendency okay but first before anything else today we'll have another branch of mathematics that deals with collecting classifying organizing summarizing analyzing and interpreting data in order to draw conclusions or make decisions so we've been already through algebra and geometry now this time we'll have statistics what's with statistics it's so simple we'll just gather data organize them present them and summarize and we're going to interpret the result of the things that we studied okay so now um here are what are the basic terms in statistics let's get to know and dig deeper the first one is what we call the population. Population consists of all objects, persons, or things that are being studied. So you see all. When we say all, ibig sabihin lahat daw nang gusto nating pag-aralan. Or I mean, nandiyan na. Okay, persons, things that are being studied. Okay, anyways, you won't have uh, any difficulty naman because I will be giving example as we go on with our discussion. Next, another topic that, another term that is related to statistics is the word sample. Sample is a subcollection of elements drawn from a population. Okay, so uh, when we say sample, subcollection daw siya. It means that out of population, kumuha lang tayo ng konti, ang kinuha natin konti na yun, ang tawag natin doon ay sample. Like, say for example, let's have the following Okay, an example of population, all schools in the Philippines, and then, syempre, masyadong marami yun. Kunwari, gusto natin pag-aralan kung, uh, kung ano yung mga favorite subject ng lahat ng estudyante na meron sa school sa Philippines, di ba? Masyadong madami yun. And if that is the case, then, we can just select junior high school students, okay? So, uh, pipili lang tayo ng konti. Okay, select, mag-select lang tayo ng ilan lang kasi masyado madaming school. May private school pa tayo, okay? So, kung magiging population natin ay all schools in the Philippines, and we can just maybe get a selected junior high school students. Okay, yun ang magiging sample natin. So, population masyadong broad while sample is masyadong specific. Okay, so kumuha lang tayo ng konti. Next, let's have another example. Population, world population, of course. Yung dami ng tao sa buong mundo, then that's an example of population. And then we can get just maybe a few out of that world population. So, pwede tayong kumuha ng mga residente na nakatira sa barangay pinagtipunan. Then that's a sample. Okay, so um, actually... Uh, basta yun lang laging yung tatandaan mo say population it's broad while sample is very specific okay and let's have another example uh, an example of population all high school students you see that all high school students masyado tayong madaming estudyante okay is this in uh, Philippines only okay yun example ng population yan all high school students now if we get just like uh, grade 7 students, then grade 7 students is an example of sample. Ano lang to, class? It's just like, halimbawa, bibili ka ng bigas. Okay? Isang sako ng bigas. And then, si mama or si papa or si, Lo si lola, madalas, ang ginagawa nila, inaamoy niya muna yung bigas kung bago pa ba ito o hindi na. Siyempre, uh, alam nga naman amuyin ni mama am amuyin mo lahat yung bigas para malaman mo kung bago pa o hindi so what we do is that dadakot lang tayo ng konti tapos yun yung aamuyin natin or titikman natin ang tawag natin dun sa dinakot natin konti ay uh, sample and then pag naamuyin natin na bago pa siya then we can say na yung buong sako ng bigas na yun ay bago pa 
Yun ang ibig sabihin ng population and sample. Okay? Now, let's go proceed on to the next one. Another term in statistics is what we call the data. It is really very important that you know what data is. Data consists of information coming from observation, counts, measurements, or responses. Okay, so let's have let let's take a look at this one. Um, uh, halimbawa, uh, observahan niyo kung gaano kadalas umulan ngayong buwan ng May. Na observahan niyo ba? O kaya ngayong June, gaano kadalas na umulan ngayong June. magtig na na ba or mag malapit na naman magbagyo-bagyo at malapit na naman makancel ang mga classes. Okay, try to observe. So pag nag-observe kayo, magtara kayo. Pag nagtara kayo, anong naobserbahan niyo? Kung gaano kadalas bilangin niyo, then ang tawag mo doon sa ginawa mo yun, na binilang mo kung gaano kadalas umulan sa buong buwan ng June ay ang tawag natin doon ay data. Okay, so hindi lang ganun lagi ang data class. A data may be already made by other researchers or surveyors na pwedeng gamitin din natin ulit as our reference data. Okay, now there are two types of data. The first one is what we call the okay qualitative data. Qualitative data can be separated into different categories that are distinguished between any some non-numeric characteristics. Okay, take note of the word qualitative data from the word quality, meaning into different categories. Wala silang kinalaman sa numeric, okay? Mga non-numeric characteristics lang sila. Let's take a look at the other type of data. The quantitative data. Quantitative data consists of numbers representing counts or measurements. So when we say quantitative data, it's so simple. You will just only uh, take a look at if there is a number. Then that's already a quantitative data. To understand better, let's take a look at the following example. Okay, an example of qualitative data is the eye color. Okay? Bakit eye color? Meron ba tayong mata na kulay 7? O kaya kulay 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 8, kulay 3.1416? Wala naman, di ba? So, an eye color or kulay ng mata may be black, bluish, grayish, brownish, uh, or whatsoever kind of color of that eye is. So, it it's more of characteristic or quality only. While quantitative data, these are data that involves number, like say, for example, number of books in the library. Diba? Number. Wala naman tayong number na kulay pink. So, number talaga yon. Okay, next. Let's have the following. Okay, so we have another example of qualitative data, the gender. Gender is... Um, a qualitative data kasi gender may be male, female, or transgender. Okay? So, yun. Qualitative data talaga yun. Next for quantitative data is the weight. When we speak of weight, bigat, di ba? Wala naman tayong bigat na extra, extra, extra large. Or extra, extra, extra small. Wala naman tayong ganun. So, when you say weight, um, you may be 72 kilograms, 65 kilograms, 60 kilograms, so on and so forth. Okay, next, another example. We have the qualitative data, the scent of cologne. Okay, the scent of cologne is an example of qualitative data because meron tayong iba't ibang scent of cologne. Like, is it flowery? Or is it a forest? Ganun ba? Yung iba ibang bango, mabango ba? Mabaho sa pangamoy mo? It's like that. Next, another example for quantitative data, we have the monthly water bill. Magkano na ba ang bill ninyo sa tubig, sa kuryente, sa internet? Okay, so those are example of quantitative data kasi numbers. Okay, pinag-uusapan ay pera. Next, let's have the following. Now, we have two different types of quantitative data. Okay, the first one is what we call the discrete data. Discrete data results from either a finite number of count or countable number of possible values. So, when we say discrete data, it's so simple. 
you will just simply uh, count na bibilang ng mata mo, makikita ng mata mo, maitut, maibibi, actually mabibilang ng mata mo at saka ng daliri mo. That's discrete data. Okay, countable ba? Next, we have the Continuous data. Continuous data result from infinitely many possible values that correspond to continuous scale covering a range of values without caps or interruptions. So, when we say continuous data, actually, para malaman mo kung ano yung bilang nun, gagamit ka pa ng continuous scale. These continuous scale are none other than but the measuring devices or tools. Like, say, for example, the weighing scale, thermometer, and, and any other measuring devices that can, so that to be able to, um, to know the value of of that certain data okay so let's have the following example para maintindihan natin example of discrete data number of books the number of books is a discrete data kasi mabibilang natin sa mata natin at sa daliri natin or kamay natin kung gaano karaming books like say for example in the library di ba mabibilang talaga natin yon pero ang amount of rain rainfall I'm sorry wrong spelling Amount of rainfall, gaano na ba kaya kadami ang binagsak na ulan? Mabibilang ba natin yon? We cannot. Okay? It's a continuous data. Next, how about the following? Another example. Another example of discrete data is the number of chairs in the room. Okay? Gaano kadaming upuan meron sa classroom? Then, that's a discrete data. Mabibilang natin yon. Next, for continuous data naman, timbang, weight, Timbang ng ano, timbang ng sako ng bigas. That's an example of continuous data. Kasi para malaman mo kung ano yung timbang ng isang sako ng bigas, you will use a weighing scale or timbangan. Okay? Uh, timbang mo, height mo, what else? Um, uh, room temperature. Uh, that's it. Those are examples of continuous data. Kasi gagamit pa ng mga measuring devices para malaman kung ano talaga yung eksaktong sukat ng timbang. Okay? Next. How about the following? Okay. Number of months in a year is an example of discrete data kasi mabibilang mo sa kamay mo kung gaano kadaming buwan meron sa isang taon. Continuous data the distance traveled by a bus. Okay, gaano kalayo ang ibinahe na bus? So, that's an example of continuous data. Hindi yun mabibilang ng daliri mo. Kaya mo bang bilangin yun? Well, you cannot. So, that's an example of continuous data. Okay? Next, we have the following. Okay, the levels of measurement. Meron tayong apat na levels of measurement. What's the first one? Okay, we have the first one, the nominal, second ordinal, third interval, and ratio. Now, here is the summary of each level. For nominal, these are categories only. Data cannot be arranged. The order does not matter. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Okay? Well, hindi nakaka-apekto yung uh, mga 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 data. Okay? Hindi nakaka-apekto yung order ng data. Hindi katulad ng sa ordinal. Ordinals, categories can be arranged in meaningful order. So, dito, mahalaga yung order. Okay? Yung pagkakasunod-sunod ba. Sa nominal, hindi mahalaga kahit naka-disarrange yung data mo. It doesn't matter. Okay? Next, we have the ordinal. Pero sa ordinal, napakamahalaga. Okay? Next, we have the interval. Interval differences between values are meaningful. Okay, napaka-importante ng, ng difference ng dalawang values. Okay, and can be determined, but there is no natural starting point. Walang natural starting point talaga dito. Okay, meaning, the zero is not, um, not, not so much, uh, uh, walang starting point. So, wala talagang zero dito. Parang ganon. Okay? Next, we have the ratio. Like interval. Katulad lang din daw siya ng interval. Pero, there is a natural zero. Starting point and ratios are meaningful. So, napaka-importante ng mga ratio natin dito. Now, to understand better, let's have the following example. Okay. For nominal, 
telephone numbers. The telephone numbers, kahit na i-disarrange mo sila, it does not, uh, kumbaga, yung mga telephone numbers, di ba? Iba yung telephone number ko, telephone number nung iba. So, it does not, uh, uh, kahit magkaiba sila, it does not, ano, it does not matter. Blood type, let's say, I am blood type, uh, blood type A positive or blood type A uh, B positive. Yung iba, it does not matter. Okay? Walang order ba? Yung pagkakasunod-kasunod, I does not. Ne, pangalan ng estudyante. Okay? For ordinal naman, sizes of t-shirts. Sizes of t-shirts are very important. Letter grades, military ranks. Kasi dito, may order na napaka-importante ng ordinal or order. Alright? Halimbawa, kung small ka, then small ka talaga. <laughs> Hindi ka pwede magsuot ng triple extra large na damit kasi ano na yun sa'yo, sayad na yun sa'yo. Uh, same also with those uh, people who are used to wearing extra, extra, extra large size of shirts. Hindi sila pwedeng magsuot ng small kasi hindi naman yun yung size ng shirts nila. So, the, the order is important. Letter grades. Letter grades are maybe uh, advanced, what else? Developing or maybe poor. So, kung developing ka, nandun ka talaga sa developing. Okay? Uh, kung ikaw ay very good and excellent student, then nandun ka talaga sa taas. Okay? Hindi ka pwedeng bigyan ng grade na mababa kung ikaw naman talaga ay magaling. Next, we have the military ranks. Okay? Pagpahalimbawa na military ranks, ano na yung ranggo ni Lolo Lola mo sa military? Okay? Uh, another example, ML, di ba? May mga ranggo din doon. O, oh, ayan. <laughs> ano ka na ba? <laughs> okay, next. We have the interval. Uh, interval winning loses, winning or loses at gambling and temperature. So, in this case, Dito, yung zero may value pa. Okay? Uh, Kung baga, napaka-importante. Kung ikaw talaga ay nanalo sa sugal, edi eh, panalo ka. Kung talo ka, talo ka talaga. So, uh, wala ka makukuha. Kung baga, yun. Pwede ka pang mag-negative. <laughs> okay? So, yan. The next, temperatures. Ito, good example of interval. Kasi, Sa temperature, di ba? Kapag sinabi natin zero, may temperature pa. It's zero. Malamig yun. So, may temperature pa. Kapag bumaba pa sa zero, like negative one, negative two, negative three, mas lumalamig, mas lumalamig. Right? So, dito, yung zero sa interval ay very important. Next, we have the ratio. For ratio, weights, heights, distance traveled, speed of a car, or speed of a speed of an object. Okay? So, dito, yung zero, pag sinabing zero sa ratio, as in totally zero talaga, wala. Okay? Halimbawa, timbang. Wala, walang timbang. And therefore, wala talaga. Zero. Pag zero yung height, eh, syempre, wala pang height. May height bang zero? Wala naman talaga, diba? This, oh, ito. Distance traveled by a car is zero. Gumalaw ba? Syempre, hindi. Okay? Gumalaw ba? yung sasakyan, hindi, di ba? So, as in totally, pag zero, zero talaga sa ratio. Wala talaga. Unlike sa interval, pag sinabing zero, meron pa. Okay? May temperature pa. Parang ganon. Okay? So, those are the terms that are related in statistics. Now, I guess, that will be all for today. And please, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't yet. And stay tuned for the next upcoming video. That will be all. Goodbye, everyone, and God bless.